Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another prayer and testimony uh, segment. Um, got a couple prayer requests, more than a couple, and uh, got a testimony. So, let's start with one of the prayer requests that I received. My prayer request is for my lost parents and brothers for the parents and brothers to have a love of the truth like God gave to me four years ago. I see if I wrote it wrong. For the truth like God, in other words, for salvation, that they come to the knowledge of the truth. And I kind of screwed that up when I wrote it down. But prayer request by Brian. And um, yes, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, please, please pray. There's so many of us that have a lot of lost people that we love and care about that they don't want to receive the truth. You can tell them, they hear it, but they don't want to receive it. It's up here, but they don't want to receive it. And my prayer that I pray is that God, not that they'll save, that they'll get saved, and as far as, God, you've got to save them, you've got to save them. Um, God gave us free will. So my prayer has always been that God give them every opportunity. If you have to, bring them to their knees. I mean, I don't want to see my family and loved ones suffer and you know physically and everything but I'd rather them go through the worst time in their life that brings them to their knees and get let God save them so they'll be in heaven with us than for them to just be happy and hunky-dory as some people used to say in the past hunky hunky dory um, so yeah my prayer would be that God gives them every opportunity Brian uh, every opportunity to get saved that God will bring a, a people their way. Um, seeds are being planted, planted. Seeds are being watered, and that they be given every opportunity to get saved. So that's one big prayer request. Uh, personal prayer request for me is, gosh, in the in the next month or two, uh, I got to do a long, long drive to pick up my future wife. And I've already asked for prayers before. So I'm trying to speak over there. I've already asked for prayer before when it comes to uh, driving. And I'm not really good at driving long distances. I know God will be with me, and it's in my prayer, but I could use your prayers. Last time you guys prayed for me on this, God answered our prayers, and He watched over me. Um, so that's a big prayer request for me. and that we're able to, you know, get everything she wants, everything she needs as far as her stuff, and get it down here and get us both back here safe. Um, and a good prayer also is to keep us, always pray for the brethren to keep our eyes on the Word of God and uh, our struggles with sin. So a lot of prayer requests today. But another big one would be for ex the site, uh, YouTube channel, Ex Catholics for Christ. James came out with a video recently that was teaching heresy, hypocrisy, and I have such love for James and Patrick and ex-Catholics for Christ, but they're, they're holding true to the pagan trinity. And they mentioned Peter Ruckman, like I said, I might do a video on it, but right now I've, with love, corrected them, and I'm hoping that within a week or so that maybe God will show, open their hearts to the truth. And... Um, but they really, really need prayer, brothers and sisters in Christ, that God will open them to the truth. I used to use those false terms of the Trinity, and, you know, they use the word triune, and it's like, that's not in Scripture. And, you know, God in three persons, and uh, they even go into the Gospel saying you, it's, a, it's faith alone. Uh, you just take it and receive it. Receive it and take it and you've earned it by your faith. And it was very disappointing. So I'm just, please, please pray that God opens their eyes. Uh, the Holy Spirit that's in them convicts them to say, hey, it's not, the Trinity's false. I mean, they mocked us who believe in the Godhead. I mean, he just basically mocked us. But anyway, he really, really, they need our prayers. James needs our prayers. Um, Ex-Catholic for Christ needs our prayer. They start going off to the right or the left, and they don't stay on the straight and narrow. God won't use them anymore, especially if they're teaching a false god and a false gospel. 
So, um, those are the prayer requests. Uh, the testimony. I, my trip back to Medford recently, uh, I had someone tell me that the Babel building that I was raised in, it's all boarded up. And some of the buildings are even gone. Uh, like they're tore up, it's like they never existed because it was a big building and then beside the building was two homes. So they bought the properties beside them that were like two homes. Or one home, but there was like two to three buildings. Uh, like two homes actually, and then a third building that they built. And now I have a video on it where I went back and those three buildings are gone. And the huge building is all boarded up. Everything's falling apart. Weeds everywhere. And uh, someone told me they moved. Um, uh, Bible says that this work be of men and will come to naught. And people think that these big buildings that are still in effect, that they must be of God. Well, if you truly watch it, the Bible building I went to had two to three splits in the time that I was there. And um, I was there for only ten years before I ran away from from God, even though I wasn't running from God. I was, I was lost as a fake Christian, but I was running, actually running from the Bible building. And I was running from family. I was running from everything, all my mistakes and everything, which you can't run from. And I joined the military. But there's times that if you really look into these battle buildings that they've had church splits. And that's evidence of if this work be of men, it will come to naught. Okay? Uh, church splits. You know, Pastors having to leave. Pastor and an associate pastor clash so bad that they have to leave. That's what happened at the battle building. They had to both go a separate way, and then we had to get a third new pastor. Um, so yeah, this testimony is to... Let the brothers and sisters of Christ know that, yeah, if this work be of men, it will come to naught. So I want to end this video with that video. So I'll see you in the next prayer and testimony uh, request video. Okay, here we're at, this was the Babel building that I grew up in. They own this whole field, and it was just pointless. This whole field, sometimes they put huge tents in there and had satanic style music going on around people where they're trying to sleep and everything making lots of noise and I was part of this false system over here there used to be two buildings that are completely gone like they never been here before like two homes that were beside this building and the Bible says this work be of men it will come to naught but someone told me well it didn't come to naught they just moved you know they just moved to another spot but here's the thing about 501c3, brothers and sisters in Christ. They can't sell the building. Gotta watch my footing. <laughs> they can't sell the building. Okay? The building's got weeds everywhere. They had to board up all the windows, probably to keep people from breaking them. But uh, I went from here since I was 12 to 21. So, nine years. And in that nine years, I've seen the church split two times. Everything's just boarded up. You just think it's a boarded up building if it wasn't for that right there. That they left up there. But yeah, brothers and sisters in Christ, God is not for these buildings. He never has been, and He never will be for buildings. Building a building, calling it a church, and inviting lost and saved people there. But just another example on how they uh, 501c3 works. Um, I had a lost person tell me why don't they just sell the, the, the land to the school and everything. Well, if the land is stuck in the same title as the building, the property here, it still falls under 501c3 also. You can only trade properties, you can't sell them. So, they moved from this, probably had to move down to a smaller building. I wish I could look it up, but I've got no internet here. <laughs> Don't need internet, but to see where they moved to see if they've moved they've had to downgrade to a smaller building but, but yeah it's just shocking coming back here after let's see I left at 21 and coming back here 
39. That's a long time. 18 years. I'm not getting younger. I'm only getting older and the Lord is, is helping me to grow. But I just wanted to show everybody this. At 21 I joined the military, so I ran away from everybody and everything. So 